the sinks or inviting them here. Yeah, sinks for coming. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about a recent work called the Triangle Ramsey Member of Complete Graphs. Joint work with Jacob Fox and Jonathan T. And so this triangle Ramsey number is a relatively new definition. Like, th like this concept was raised at a workshop at UCSD like this spring actually. And yeah, so I will start by defining what the ram what the triangle Ramsey number is, and then I'll describe what we can prove. So let's start with some. relatively more familiar concepts. So a graph G is H Ramsey with any true coloring. Of G has a monochromatic copy of H, right? Uh, so this has been studied a lot, obviously. And so there are two concepts related to HMT that has been studied very extensively. So the Ramsey number, let's write a pound sign for a number, is the Minimum number of vertex in an H Ramsey graph. And this will be denoted R small r of H throughout the talk. And there is another concept uh, which was introduced, I think, by. Mm, by Erdos, Fauci, Russell, and Schell called the size Ramsey number. Which is often denoted by R hat of H, but here I will denote it by R small e of H for reasons that will become apparent later on. So it is a minimum number of edges in a HMZ graph. A very natural question is to ask. Well, so, so obviously we know that the problem of determining Ramsey number is very difficult. For example, the Ramsey number of the complete graph has not been determined asymptotically. There was some very exciting breakthroughs written, but no like asymptotic has been found yet. And similarly, determining size Ramsey number is also very difficult. And one might ask, how are these quantities related? So there's a very there there is a basic proposition we can prove, which is like say H is connected, then the size Ramsey number is lower bounded by linear of the Ramsey number. And upper bounded by quadratic of the Ramsey number. So why is this? Well, the lower bound is because any like smallest H Ramsey graph will be like, like any edge minimal Ramsey graph H H H Ramsey graph will be con will be connected. So its number of vertices is the most one plus the number of edges. And the upper bound is well this. It's nice to remember this is that the complete graph from RH vertices is H Ramsey by definition, and so it has at most RH choose two edges. And so the upper bound 
and 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 and, and so R H is two other bounds the size one. This turns out to be a uh, well not very good bound in general. There are cases where the upper bound is tight, cases where the lower bound is tight, and cases where none of the bounds are tight. So for example, let me give a very interesting example where neither bounds are tight. So basically when H is cubic, uh, it was the result of, let's see, It was the result of Schwata Rodo Stremedi at Potter. Uh, but the cubic means degree three. And and, and, and and so basically in this case it was shown that empty number of H is linear in the size of H. Uh, but the at Ramsey number of H, well it has not been determined exactly yet. And Work by Conlon, the, the, the best upper and lower bounds are due to Conlon, Ninadov, Chudik, and Tikit Moro. And so, so, so we know that R, the, the side range number is upper bound by h to the power of h fifths. And there exists an h such as rh is greater than greater than equal to h times e to the c. <coughs> So neither of these bounds are tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. This won't be relevant to that. Uh, but but very interestingly, in the first paper about size Ramsey number, uh Erdos Forty Rotel and Shell proves that for Set shows that for one particular case, it is possible to determine the exact relationship between the Ramsey number and the size Ramsey number. And they attribute the argument to Schwarter. Consider the size Ramsey number of the complete graph, it is exactly equal to RKT. Yes. So the upper bound is exactly that. Okay. <coughs> so basically, this is, this is as much of size Ramsey number as I'll discuss. Uh, now discuss the triangle Ramsey number. So basically, in this workshop at UCSD, Sam Sparrow asked the following question. Well, we're here we're looking at the number of vertices or edges in an H Ramsey graph, right? What about we look at count of other objects? And so, and so Sparrow proposed the following definition, which called R f of H. And and for an F is a graph. And this defined as the minimum copy of F, an unlabeled copy of F in an H M zero. So the vertex Ramsey number corresponds to the case where f is a singular vertex, and the size Ramsey number corresponds to the case when f is a single edge. And so Spiral wants to know what this thing behaves like in general. And so he like and um, Spiral proposed one natural question, which is what if we replace f with a clique of higher order? So Problem. So, so the problem Sparrow asks is what is R K S K T? By the way, when you say number of copies, you want a subgraphs. Mm, yes, yeah, yeah. Not in your subgraphs. Yes, yeah. Subgraph. I'm sure I made that. Mm -hmm. uh, but but for for 
graph, but for complete graph, it doesn't matter. I, 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 I don't think I would say anything about not complete F, mm -hmm. and it's not like we know anything beyond trivial and stuff in that case. So it turns out, well, S greater than equal to T. This is already solved by Falkman in 1970. So, 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 so Falkman showed that there exists K T plus one free K T randy graphs, and so. Uh, KS KT is simply zero. Right. B -b 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 because <laughs> because by definition there is a graph with zero copy of KT plus one, that is KT right. By the way, there are a lot of follow-up works on this and recently there was a hundred page paper about this. Yeah, so 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 basically studying for which F and H is RFH equal to zero is a very, very why widely studied problem, but that digresses from. And but when let S is less than equal to H, where R K S K T cannot be zero, because because for a graph to be K T Ramsey, it must have at least one copy of K T. And so. Motivated by this, uh, several <coughs> conjectures that actually the complete graph on RKT vertices minimizes the number of KS for all as an all as that less than equal to T. So, so this has become a conjecture that will will say that this for any. KT Ramsey graph it contains at least uh, KT to the S copy of KS. Oops. So this Schwarzschild result already solves this for s equal to one and s equal to two. For s equal to three, during the workshop we we confirm this by an exhaustive search for s equal to three and t equal to three. So yeah, and the main theorem in this talk. is that we confirm this conjecture for s equal to 3 and all sufficiently large t. Greater than equal to four, we don't know anything. Be like, like we don't even have numerical result because R K four is way too large for an exhaustive search. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for S greater than equal to four, this is going to So how large is the T? <coughs> what is the lower bound on T uh, from the fifty? Uh, I don't think it is too bad. Like it depends on the constants in a few preceding papers, so it is kind of hard to work out. But given how RKT grows, I think it's less than one hundred to see at least. Yes. Be 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 because like RKT grows extremely fast, so that is kind of helping us. Yeah. But yeah, we didn't go through the constants because it re it, it involves so many papers and kind of. Any questions about the link theory? Okay. Um, I have a question. 
when s is 2, it's a bit confusing to me now. So simple s equal to 2, or k s, k t is simply the edge. So rank the number of kt is like number of vertices, and then you choose two. Mm. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is size rank. <coughs> oh, so 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 so. This is size rank. Oh, size. Uh, I see. So the conjecture here is. Um, Oh, this is that's the yeah, I, I see. Yeah. Okay. So this is known since 1978, yeah. and Jacob likes to like, spread this argument around because it is very elegant, and I would do it here actually. Does okay. that mean that Ramjit are complete? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, 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 so this is sheet for K for the complete part. I see. I see. Yeah. So, in the second part of the talk, I will argue that the question we are studying is, has less to do with like what you would normally expect from a Ramsey series paper, but more from chromatic numbers, <coughs> but from a number on, from, but from a paper on chromatic numbers. So, so, so basically, I will introduce a main theorem about chromatic numbers that will be used to imply this. Like to motivate what I will do, let's first look at the proof of this theorem. So the proof of this theorem depends on a very clever observation, which is if G is KT Ramsey, then Chromatic number G is at least R of KT. And this only holds for KT. This does not hold for any other part. And what is the proof? So let me do a proof by example when t equal to 3. Mm -hmm. And in this case, rkt is equal to 6. So the proof proceeds as follows. Say the chromatic number of g is less than or equal to 5. Then we could split g into five independent parts. And in other words, there is a graph homomorphism from G to K5. Right. And by the definition of the chromatic number, we, oh, by the definition of the Ramsey number, we can color this K5 such that it has no K3. And what we now do is we pull this coloring back back along this homomorphism. So for example, for these for every edge between these two independent sets, we look at their <coughs> corresponding vertex and color well all the edges between them the same color. And similarly for all other vertex pairs, vertex pairs. And uh, now I claim that this coloring is, has no mono, monochromatic K3. Yeah. And you could check this quite easily by yourself. So, yeah, this is done. So, what do you do inside the partition? Mm, the, the point is, inside the partition, it is empty because oh. it's a, because a chromatic number, like, 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 like I took the partition. Dude. So, 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 so
so we have intake, group source knowledge. <coughs> and now Trato's theorem is kind of easy because there is this proposition that if the chromatic number of a graph is at least R, then EG, the number of edges in G, is at least R choose 2. And the proof is short. So without loss of generality, assume G is R critical. which means that if you remove any vertex, the chromatic number drops by one. And, and I could always assume this because removing vertex, because from, because from any graph with chromatic number r, I could remove vertex until it is r critical and it is just, and, and if I remove enough vertex, it could only hurt the number of edges. And then, like, for any R critical graph, its, min it's minimal degree is at least R minus 1. I know. When you, and its number of vertices is at least R. So this implies <coughs> the number of edges is at least R choose 2. Yeah. <coughs> This proposition and this proposition combined immediately implies Schwarzschild. this proof can be adapted to our main theorem. So for our main theorem, this still holds, right? So if we could replace this E of G by T of G, that's where, where I let T of G is in the number of K3s in G, like, like I, I, if I can prove an analogy of this for K3, I'm done. Right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it is familiar that there's no analogy of this for K3. Because there exists triangle-free graphs of arbitrary chromatic number. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So to bypass this, uh, we realize that there is one other kind of weak property that we could salvage from the KT Ramsey stuff. So, from, 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 from the KT Ramsey assumption. And it is the following proposition. So, without loss of generality, we could assume removing any edge of G makes G not KT Ramsey, right? If we want to prove our main theorem. Be, 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 because we can re repeatedly move, remove other edges until G has this property and removing edges can only decrease the number of triangles. And so from the such a graph we could salvage the following property. Every edge of G is contained in a copy of KT. So why is this? Because otherwise we could, because otherwise by this assumption we could two color the rest of the graph such that it has no monochromatic KT. And then we can color this edge whatever we want because it won't create any new KT because it's not in any KT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, 
And so because it's containing kt, it is also containing at least t minus 2 triangles, right? Be because a copy of kt has t minus 2 triangles. So far, is it a teacher's dream? Uh, no, because <laughs> I can take a specific edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be, 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 because if I have a K four, like this oh, edge yeah, is only containing two. Edge. I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. So basically, I'm assuming uh -huh. each edge is containing uh -huh. T minus two triangles. Uh -huh. um, I don't think this works. If I, uh, I don't think this. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I think there's actually a counterexample if you replace edge with vertex here. And, well, and yeah, but it only makes sense once I write down our main theorem, which is about chromatic numbers. And so basically what we argue is that this proposition together with this proposition is enough to deduce our main theorem. Our main theorem. Which is strange because this proposition is kind of very weak, but we show that it is just strong enough. So here is our main theorem with, which would directly imply the theorem above, which is if uh, there is an absolute constant k. So so k is just a number. It's like you you can imagine a ten to the ten to the ten or something uh, such that if g satisfies. One, <coughs> one, the, its chromatic number is at least r, and two, each e, each edge is in at least k <coughs> triangle. Then the number of triangle in G is at least r to three. Uh, this is clearly the best possible because you can take g equal to kr. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. Uh, any questions about the zero? <coughs> So the, the k here, though, is related to uh, directly to the kt. Yes. So, so in that case, the bounds that you get for t is like ten to the ten to the ten, or whatever, whatever the bound oh, is for k here. Yeah. And that, that's something related to the number of to our kt. Yeah, that's a good point. <coughs> I think I made a mistake about the thing. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think I earlier made a mistake about okay. the, the range of t we're getting. So, 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 so basically, the best t we can get in that same is actually big k plus two. Yes, yeah, thanks for catching that. Okay. So I uh, so I think you can make it better because one edge. I I I, I don't think one edge is only containing one copy of kt. It must be containing yeah, many yeah, copies yeah. of kt, but. I actually don't know how to argue that. So. <laughs> so once we have this theorem, we simply take any t greater than equal to k plus two, and then any critical kt Ramsey graph will satisfy these two properties. So the number of triangles in TG is at least what you want.
so this so just a few words about the theorem like this theorem can be classified as a study of locally sparse graphs. So which means that each vertex is contained in very few triangles. And so, so there has been quite a few papers, quite 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 a few works about chromatic number of locally sparse graphs. And I know that these previous works can get us within a constant multiple of R23. But I think our theorem is the first result in on this line that gives an exact answer. And yeah, so it is it is kind of surprising to me that an exact answer can be obtained here. Do you have a counterexample if k is like equal to one, for example? No, I. Yeah, that yeah, that's a very good question. I actually don't have a counterexample. One, it is cons and it is conjectured that it also holds for. So, so we conjecture that it also holds for k equal to one. Yeah. But we don't know how to prove it. So our machinery only gives us sufficiently large k. Yeah. Right, conjecture. Does this theorem only work for triangles? Yes, it does not work for K-force, and actually we have a counterexample for that, and I will explain there is enough time. Yeah, so, so as a color of this remark is that the S equal to four case here is very, very open and I don't know how to do it at all. <coughs> so let's move on and and in the next part I'm going to present an argument that gets us very close to this, but not quite. And I'm presenting because the argument is actually very short. So the proposition I will prove in this section is the following. So subject to one and two on, on the left hand side, we have it's actually very, very close. Pg greater than equal to 1 minus 6 over k times r to 3. Yeah. So, yeah, so if we translate this back to our main theorem, this actually gives us 1 minus small of 1 away from what we want. But to bridge that gap is not very easy. But fortunately, this proposition has a pretty elegant proof, and I think I'll present it here. So the proof is what we call the basic Turan argument in the paper. And as the name suggests, it will use the Turan theorem in a kind of a not very obvious way. Okay, so let me start to prove this. So I'm going to define a sequence of graphs. Um, in particular, I'm going to this define a sequence. <coughs> I'm going to successfully remove vertices from our graph G, and I will argue that each time we remove vertices, we remove a large number of triangles. So the actual proposition we will prove is actually holds for any graph with chromatic number r, which is 
want to show if the chromatic number of G is R, then the number of triangles in G plus one half the number of edges in G is at least that of the complete one. And this, combined with condition 2 here, will immediately imply this. Right. Uh, because condition 2 says that the number of triangles is at least k over 3 times the number of edges. So mm -hmm. substituting this into this will immediately give us this. And to show this, I will use the removing vertex idea. So, let G0 be G, and I will define a sequence of graphs G0, G0 prime, G1, G1 prime, and so on, that satisfy the following condition the chromatic number of gi will be r minus i and gi prime is actually r minus i vertical and finally Gi plus 1 is a subgraph of Gi prime and is a subgraph <laughs> of Gi. Okay. I should rewrite this on another board. So, this is a sequence of graphs G0, G0 prime. One, G one prime, so on. And um, that number of G i is R minus I. And G i prime is R minus <coughs> one. So remember that R minus that my R minus one critical means that the chromatic number is R minus one, but removing any vertex decreases the chromatic number by one. So to get from GI to GI prime, we just do the simplest thing, which is remove vertex until the graph is R minus one two. GI plus 1, we do something that I know some people in the audience will like, is that we remove <coughs> a maximal independent set. We remove a maximum independent set. Which I will call I up. And so, because we remove an independent set, the chromatic number drops by at most one. And because G i prime is r minus one critical, it will drop by at least one. So, so therefore, we conclude that chromatic number of G i plus one is exactly r minus i minus one, which is what we want. So. Now we analyze how t plus one half e evolves in this process. So, because we are removing vertices, this t plus one half e we're interested in is not increasing from g i to g i prime. Uh, 
And let's think about how this changes when we go from GI prime to GI plus one. Draw a diagram here like this is II, an independent set. This is a GI plus one, and there are edges <coughs> between them. And so for any V, we remove the number of edges equal to its degree in GI plus one. And for each V, we remove these triangles that have that contains V plus an additional edge in the neighborhood of V. So this is actually equal to the sum over all V in our maximum independent set. Mm, the number of triangles removed, which is the number of edges in GI prime in the neighborhood of V. Plus the number of edges removed, which is the degree of V in GI prime. And the key of the argument is to look at the induced graph induce a graph of GI prime on the neighborhood of V. I'll just call this graph Y. So note that II is a maximum independent set. So the independence number of y is at most the size of i. And so we could apply Turan theorem on this induced subgraph and conclude that the number of edges of y is at least the number of vertex of y squared over 2 alpha y minus 1 half the number of vertices of mm -hmm. y. And using the criticality assumption, <coughs> the size of y is at least r minus i minus 1 because in a critical graph any vertex has degree at least r minus i minus 1 so the number of edges of y plus 1 half the size of y is at least r minus i minus 1 squared over 2 times the size of the independent set And finally, notice that we are summing over ii, right? So this and this and this cancels out. And so this is at least r minus i minus 1 squared over 2. Yeah. And that is important analysis <laughs> in this argument. And once we have this analysis, we just have to
questions about this argument? Essentially, the rest of our paper is showing that this is essentially the only situation in which it is tight. minutes I'll very briefly describe what is happening in the rest of the paper which consists of removing this constant here several cases and in each case we figure out a different way to remove the 6 over k constant in our zero in, in uh, sorry in that proposition over zero and so these strategies can be roughly divided into two parts One is the f one part is when G where we can find some sort of structure in G. Uh, we argue that there is some alternate coloring process that gives a better upper bound than this coloring process. Well, this is not really a coloring process, but it, it, it is sort of a coloring process. And when G, and the second case is when G has no such structure, we argue that the use of Turan theorem over zero is not tight in some way. There is something that you might be thinking of, and we did use Ramsey Turan theorem over there. And we did use Ramsey Turan theorem. So basically, the Ramsey Turan theorem says that that Turan theorem is not you. You you could gain a constant in Turan theorem when the when the independent when the uh, click number is small enough. And we indeed use that fact in our argument. I guess there is one kind of simple case that I could cover here. 
which is when G has at most QR minus two vertices, there is a theorem of Galai <laughs> that says that if G is R critical, <coughs> then G actually looks like this. So G can be divided into two parts that are complete to each other. And inside each part there is a there is another critical group. And obviously this complete structure gives us a lot of triangles. So we are essentially so our proof is essentially complete using that same proof just now. But when G is but when G is larger we don't have such a nice theorem so we have to find weaker structures using the previous work on triangle um, locally sparse graphs and these results include I'll just make a list here so these results include a result of rule on this coloring and an idea of molar read on like coloring degenerate graphs so basically thi this result says that when your degenerate graph does not have too many triangles you can actually outperform the greedy the greedy algorithm and <coughs> a theorem another theorem of Harris on the where a number of T versus a chromatic number. By, by the way, this, is, this result is what I meant when I say previous results can do that up to a constant. <coughs> and as I just said, Ramsey 2 and 3. And finally, to handle the last case, there is we there is a tweak we can do to the Turan process that fills in some remaining gap. Okay, so this is as much as I want to go into the proof. So maybe in the end, I will answer Tingwei's question on why is this false for K4? And the construction is as follows. We take a, we take a triangle graph that has chromatic number R and has O R cubed log square edges. Uh, we know that such a graph actually exists. And then you attach K disjoint copies of K4 to each edge. Yeah. 
So basically, if I have a drop here, I just to attach a single string copy of k4, I introduce two more vertices and connect them to the existing vertices. And for the second copy, I also introduce two more vertices and attach them to existing copies. So, so these new vertices are introduced just to boost the, just to satisfy this condition. So this graph has OK R cube log square R copies of K4, but it but it has chromatic number R. So this is an order lower than what you want here, which is K transform. So this theorem breaks apart completely when you replace K series with K4. And yeah, we don't know a good substitute that we can fit here. So that is it and any questions? Any questions? Uh, so did I understand correctly <coughs> if your graph is not too large, like if it's smaller than two two r minus two, then every then it does work. The argument does work if k is say one is just yeah yes. yeah you can't obviously can't always make the assumption. <coughs> yeah, 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 you always gotta assume you don't have to generalize this beyond. Right. Like, like to, 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 to like bound this trivial that you need on the order of R squared vertices, right so there's still a large gap in between. Do you feel that like this uh, right. this kind of the the conjecture tight cases that you only have R vertices, but yeah. You know. So yeah, so so yes, I think we can prove some kind of stability result that shows that it's essential to the case. Any other question? So I remember that there was some uh, theorem by Kostatchka and his former student about the minimum number of edges, low bound of number of edges in a critical graph using some potential method. Like, have you thought about some method of modifying some argument, like instead of bounding the number of edges? Maybe can we use that kind of argument to bound number of triangles? Uh, <laughs> not aware of that argument. Yeah. Much so There's very elegant uh, theorem on number of edges on uh, critical graphs, so mm. may be useful. But <coughs> <coughs> yeah. What if I change the number of colors between three? Mm -hmm. Just curious. Like you, you said. She avoided two colors. Three colors. Three colors. Oh. I think every single zoo. <laughs> is there a component of this proof that fails for three colors? I guess I, I think the chromatic argument still holds right here. You can also argue the number of triangles. So, 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 so I think the whole proof goes through without multiplication. If you're interested in three copies of KT. But uh, I think it also goes through for like M copies of K3 if that matters at all. But okay. Any other questions? Um, okay. If not, let's take the speaker.